What's up everyone? Welcome back to Horsepower Obsessed. Thanks for pressing play. Today we have something planned major for the C8 Corvette. It is definitely something you're going to want to see, so stay tuned. All right, guys, real quick, before we get started, if you could please go ahead and smash that thumbs up button, let YouTube know you are liking the content so other car enthusiasts such as yourself get to see this video. But anyway, moving right along, I said there is a big change coming, something you guys are really gonna like. It's kind of big. So whenever I say big, it's something that I have been looking forward to for quite some time. It's something I think the car should have had from factory, but it's not necessarily big in size. What it's going to do is allow the car to do something that I feel like it should have done from the beginning, like I said. Now, it's something you guys are definitely going to like as well, but it is going to require you have something on the car already. So let's talk about it. It is winter time here in Pennsylvania, so this is what you can kind of expect all of the cars to look like on the road, just totally covered in salt and dirt. Luckily, the C8's not too bad. I've been driving it. I have been driving this thing in the cold weather on <laughs> on the summer tires. I know not the smartest thing on the planet, but I haven't done it in the snow and it's only gotten down to about 30 degrees. These are recommended that you don't drive on them under 40 degrees because of the fact that they basically are hockey pucks. There's not really a whole lot of grip, but I haven't really been doing anything too crazy. I just like to see how the car handles itself in the cold weather. And I'll be honest, guys, if you had a nice set of winter tires on this car, it would be pretty good in the snow. It has been absolutely fantastic to drive even during the colder months because it's got that heated steering wheel. It's got the heated seats. It's got the remote start so I mean the car is ready to go by the time I come out to it but anyway I know you guys are like okay okay enough talking let's see what you got for the car when I told you there's kind of a prerequisite to this what I was referring to is you should have the engine appearance package now you guys are probably saying well why do I need the engine appearance package Justin what is this mod well let me show you so if we pop open the rear hatch here number one we get to see all the water run in there but up there you can see we have the lights. Now the lights and the carbon fiber here are a part of the actual engine appearance package. My main concern is that these lights light up the engine bay at night or when the hatch is open, but you can't have them on while you're driving the car. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that is kind of a huge missed opportunity because I think it looks absolutely awesome. And these two LEDs, or actually I guess there's technically four up in there, don't really illuminate this area back here enough to cause any kind of problems or confusion at night. They light up the engine bay and it's more of a glow. And the way that the engine looks with these lights on is absolutely awesome. I got something from a company called Power Labs. What they offer is a little harness that goes behind the driver's side seat, behind some panels, of course, that will allow you to turn this thing on whenever you want using the defroster button. Now, I know you guys are gonna have a bunch of questions about that, and honestly, I don't have the answers yet. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hook it up, I'm gonna install it, I'm gonna show you the process, and then later tonight, we're gonna play with it and see how it looks. The big one I wanna know is how it looks at night from inside the car and whether or not it's going to be too obtrusive, I guess, or too annoying at night. Either way, I wanna see how that's gonna look, and I also wanna show you how awesome it's gonna look on the engine itself. But the real big one is, how's it gonna operate? When I press the defroster button, does it turn on and stay on with the defroster? You know, I have questions too. So we're gonna figure that out together, but what we're gonna do right now is get this thing installed. So yeah, believe it or not, the harness does not actually go in the back here. What we're gonna have to do is get in the driver's side, behind the driver's side seat and start pulling out some panels. And just for install purposes, I have the target top removed. Today here in PA, it's about almost, it's approaching 50 degrees. So that's actually pretty warm for the winter time, believe it or not. I don't know how that snow's still there. It's pretty much melted everywhere else. But anyway, this is what we're installing. So this is all it takes to make this happen. Like I said, this is something I think the car should have come with, the ability to turn this light on and off as you wish. But I, if I had to guess, it's probably a Department of Transportation style thing because it could be annoying to drivers behind you. But like I said, the light is so dim, it almost glows. It's not necessarily illuminating anything. It's just, I, I don't see how it could possibly be an issue. But anyway, this is it. The instructions are very explicit. Do not bend this thing in the middle. So if I had to guess, there's a fuse or something in there that you could possibly break by bending this. So so this is going to go in between two pieces of wiring right in this area here. So we have to actually take off this top part. So the halo piece underneath has to be popped off. And then this part here has to be popped back enough that we can get into right around in here to access what we have to plug in. So let's get to it. 
So the instructions say the first step is to get this particular piece of trim off up at the top. We can kind of just start pulling down at it. There is some clips up in here. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is employ the use of a trim tool, something like this, yeah. These are what I've got. So I'm gonna kind of work this up in here behind the rubber and start prying down. They're just on there with some clips. You can kind of see there where the body panel is versus where the interior panel is. So we can start working at these, just pulling them down enough that these clips are gonna start separating like that. So you guys know how the clips work. Right around the time you think you're gonna break them, that's when they'll give loose. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. There's another one. And then there's way, one way far in the back there. We're gonna really have to get back in there. Now, another step that I forgot to mention was that we wanna put the seat all the way forward to make this a little easier on ourselves. So let's go ahead and do that. And with the seat all the way forward, we actually get a pretty clear view back here of the split. So right in between there is where we're trying to pull the, the clips out of to get access to this area. So if you see right here, I'm putting my hand in there. That's where we need to separate so we can start pulling this entire piece away. There we go, okay. So now we can start working on this piece here. Now, as you can tell, this particular panel that we're working on right here is attached to the seat belt as well. So we're not gonna be able to completely remove it. We just have to pull it far enough back and those cables are right around in this spot here. So let's start popping this thing out. Pulling these panels kind of starts hurting the hands. So if you have some sort of gloves you can wear to assist with that, I would recommend it. So anyway, let's go ahead. We can kind of do the rest here with our hands. If we got ourselves a nice pair of gloves, just start working the panel out. All right, so that should be it. With the clips out pretty much just that much, you can actually see the connector right there. That's the one we're gonna disconnect and then put harness, which looks exactly the same, in between the actual module it's plugged into and the end of the wiring harness. So this will just kind of jump or bridge the gap between the two. And just a little bit of an update here, guys. The main harness here is actually clipped to the body of the car. You actually wanna remove the back part. This is the back part right here. And the part that's attached to the car is right here. So you'll wanna slide this back out of it and then put the harness in between this and this. <laughs> It's kind of tight in there. It's not gonna be too difficult. At the end of the day, we only popped a couple clips. This really maybe takes five minutes once you get this far. Let me go ahead and get the harness in there and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. And there it is fully clipped into place. You can kind of see the connector in the back there with the new one plugged in right there. Now, they're not gonna look overly different because yeah, the actual harness for this is the exact same connector style so even if a dealership was to look at this they wouldn't even be able to tell anything was different there but we're going to go ahead and test the functionality of this before we button all this back up just to make sure it's working correctly and it's doing exactly what we want so yeah very easy installation here guys honestly the hardest part is popping some of these clips and even that's not that difficult so like i said if you have the car with the engine appearance package i would highly 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 recommend this especially if you have one of these beautiful engine covers from pat over at american hydrocarbon because that thing would be lit up at night and yeah i mean during the summer especially at like car shows that happen later at night that would just be an absolute impressive detail but anyway i'm gonna go ahead and test this and i will be back with you guys in one second and here it is all buttoned back up i would have showed you guys that but of course it is just the opposite of disassembly so i don't want to bore you all to death but it is ready to go i tested it it is all good to go but i am going to make you guys wait until a little later tonight to see exactly what this thing is and why i'm so freaking excited for it so yeah i'm going to catch you guys here in probably about two hours right around five or six o'clock at night because in pennsylvania with daylight savings time it is pitch black at five o'clock so i'll see you guys in about two hours all right guys, it is about seven o'clock at night and we are here with the C8 Corvette. I know you probably can't see me, but that's kind of the point. The car is running and yeah, this is what we normally get at night. So as you can see, the lights are on, the AWE exhaust is sounding beautiful, but there is no light in this area back here where there should be, in my opinion. In order to get some of that, we just will pop the hatch here and immediately you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And yes, that looks a million times better from a distance. We just get to see a little bit of that lovely mid-engine layout. Now, unfortunately, as soon as I close this hatch, that will eventually fade out. And once that goes off, it is off until you open up the car door or open up the hatch again. And yeah, I don't know. I just, I want more. I want. I want it to be able to be controlled. I want it to be able to be turned on whenever I want. That's what this harness is all about. 
So we can watch as this fades off and slowly disappears. And there you go. It is now completely off. The car is still running. Let's go ahead and jump inside and I'm gonna show you the operation of it now after we installed the harness from Power Labs. So you can tell the car is on, it's running. Everything's good, the headlights are on. But back here behind me, there's nothing until we come down here and we press the rear defroster button. Now, what's really cool about this is that when I press it, I can actually hear something click behind me, a relay of sorts, I assume, that turns those lights on. And maybe you can hear it too. And yeah, every time that clicks, it's turning on that light. Check this out. Okay, so not really a big deal inside the car, I know, but from the outside, it is very, very freaking cool. We finally get the ability to light up that engine and let everybody know, hey, this is the new Corvette. This is the one with the engine in the rear. Let's look at the rear view mirror here. So obviously right now it's the camera. If I turn it to the actual mirror and turn on the rear, I don't know how much you're able to see there, but I can see it a tiny bit in that mirror. It's really, really not distracting at all. So, so far I'm liking it. I didn't think it would be distracting just because it's not that bright. It, Like I said before, it's mostly kind of a, a glow. It's not necessarily a giant illumination. Kind of like the light here. If you look, there's a light that kind of casts down from the rear view mirror and it gives everything like a little bit of a whitish glow on the interior. It's similar to this. It's not really overpowering, but it is enough to see that glorious engine back there. So. I'm liking it. Now, of course, if I hit this button and turn that on and then step back outside, I'll kind of show you how much cooler it looks out here too. So here we are at the rear again, only this time this is set up to not turn off. So I pressed the rear defroster button and that illumination is on, or I, I kind of like to call it a glow because it's not insanely bright, but it is very clear that this is the mid-engine Corvette. So yeah, pretty much any angle is gonna get you a real nice view of that. And we'll say I'm sitting behind this car in a normal car. Yeah, I can't even really tell if that's lit up. So I kind of like the idea of this just for sitting somewhere, waiting for someone to come out, or like I said, sitting at a car show, that is gonna be lit up and it looks so freaking awesome. It really is not distracting at all out of the rear of the car. And I don't see how it could be even to the people behind you because it's so almost not visible. I think this is a win. This looks great. Big thank you to Power Labs for sending this out to me. Very easy to install and it is very custom. I'm loving the look of this thing. One last time before we wrap up the video, guys, of the interior, the light behind me is almost non-existent. You can almost not see it at all. But of course, from the outside, it's a different story. But on the back of the camera here, it doesn't look very bright to me. So my rear window in the C8 Corvette is tinted. Um, it's a 20% tint, so that probably helps a little bit. But like I said, that light back there is not that bright to begin with. So I think we're good. It really seems like an awesome mod to me. And for how much time I put into it and how much this thing costs, I believe Power Labs is charging 75 bucks for it. So it's an easy, cheap way to have your own control over that engine appearance package light. As I press it, whatever little bit you can see there now, that's off, that's on. On my viewfinder here, it is barely any different, but yeah, you guys let me know. But so far, I'm thinking it's awesome. Big thumbs up to Power Labs. They have one heck of a product and it's easy to install. Thank you, Power Labs. All right, guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. So if you liked what you saw, please give me a big thumbs up. If you have any questions about this particular Power Labs addition to the C8 Corvette, go ahead and let me know down in the comments section below. And yeah, if you have any comments or anything whatsoever regarding this particular mod, let me know. I'm always interested to hear from you guys. The whole idea of making this channel was to kind of make a community of people that love Corvettes as much as I do, something that we can always talk about and bounce ideas off each other. So if you have any questions at all regarding any of these Corvettes, please let me know in the comments section. But anyway, I'm gonna give a big thumbs up to Power Labs. This product was definitely something I would recommend because it was so easy to install and it really gives you guys that extra custom look to your car and the fact 
fact that it will work the way you want it to. So from the very beginning, like I said, I wanted this to be an option and I really thought it was originally. And it's unfortunate it's not, but it's easily fixable. That's where Power Labs comes in. And guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. I'm gonna have loads of C8 Corvette, C5 Corvette, C7 Corvette, basically all kinds of Corvette information coming. You are not gonna wanna miss. And as always guys, I will catch you in the next upload.